part two, functional programming in JavaScript, higher order functions, thank you for joining. If you're like me, you're probably asking yourself, why do I care? And my answer to that would be because higher order functions are the lifeblood of functional programming. Over these next few videos, we're gonna be taking functions, storing them in variables, passing them as arguments, returning functions from functions, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So step one, what is a higher order function? Higher order function is basically treating functions as first class citizens. What that means is you're able to return functions from functions, you're able to pass functions to functions and invoke them, you're able to store functions and variables and then pass them around that way. So that's key to understanding what higher order functions are. All right, so let's hop into our IDEs and look at an example. So I mentioned earlier in the video that functions in JavaScript are first class citizens. So that means you can do stuff like this. Console.log foo, save that, open up the terminal. And you can see that function foo here is actually a function and we're storing that inside of a variable. You can also do stuff like this. If I could type, geez. All right, hello there. So what this function is doing is basically returning another function and then console logging. Let me invoke this bad boy here and hop into the terminal and we'll see hello there printed. And this might look strange for a second, but what this is doing, like I said, bar is being invoked and then bar actually returns another empty function or a function being a weighted invocation. And if you invoke it again immediately after that, it logs hello there. So the fact that we're able to do this is super powerful. And this basically means that we wrote a higher order function. So if you understand this and you're gonna understand the rest of this video. Another example. So I'm gonna go back into my terminal and I'm gonna write another function here called update numbers. And it's gonna take in some numbers and it's going to call numbers.map. I'm gonna pass it a callback of num plus two. And if I go ahead and log update numbers, I'm gonna invoke it with one, two, three, hop into my terminal and you'll see three, four, five. So this is nothing special, I'm just, passing um, update numbers, an array of numbers, and it's looping over it and then, or mapping over it, and then it's calling this callback that I passed to it, and it's incrementing the numbers by two for every single number in that array. This is pretty basic stuff, and you may be asking yourself, why do I care about this function here? Array.map is nothing special. And the reason that we care is because the native array.map method is actually a higher order function. The fact that we're able to pass a callback to that and then it, it invokes it and passes us a number for us to do something with is actually pretty sweet. Now that we understand what a higher order function looks like, let's try to see how one might work under the hood. So we're going to dissect or try to reverse engineer how, what the map function probably does under the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function here called map. And this new function is gonna take in an array. It's gonna take in a callback. And in this map function, we're going to create a new array it's gonna call it, it's gonna be called updated. And as we iterate, we're gonna be pushing things into this new array. So we're gonna to have to for loop over this original array. So we're gonna iterate over, and then for every single item in that array, we're gonna be calling the callback and then passing it the current, I guess, index in that array or the current pointer. And whatever's returned from that callback, we're gonna be storing as that index in the updated array. So that might not make sense, but I'll explain more. Create a new variable called update, and the update is gonna be equal to the invocation of the callback, and I'm gonna pass it the current pointer in that array. So if I go ahead and console log update, I'm not gonna do anything yet, I'm just gonna console log it, and I'm gonna invoke map here, pass it one, two, three, like our other example, and then pass it a callback of num plus two, basically what we did in the other example. I should see the item that we're actually updating. So if I go to my terminal and run higher order, you're gonna see three, four, five, because what's happening is I'm looping over this array right here. And for each number in that array, I'm calling the callback, I'm passing it the current item that we're iterating over. And then the callback is returning that number plus two. The reason that this is so important to learn is because later in these videos, we're gonna be talking about concepts like currying and function composition. And both of those involve 
passing functions to other functions and returning functions from functions. So it's very important that we understand why this is useful. Let's go ahead and finish this example out. I'm going to take this update that we have right here and I'm gonna call updated.push and I'm gonna push that update into that new array and I'm going to return that new array. So now we should be able to store some type of result in a variable after we invoke this map function. And if I go ahead and console log this result, then we should see this new array being returned. And we do. Let's look at another example. Make a new function here called greeter. It's gonna take in a greeting. It's gonna return a function that takes in a name. And then all it's gonna do is just log a string and it's gonna do greeting comma name exclamation point. So if I go ahead and invoke this, I'm gonna pass in hello. I'm gonna invoke it again immediately and pass it Brody. So if I go to the console and I run node higher order, I should see hello Brody. And I can do the same thing again. This time I'm gonna call YouTube. So this might not mean much to us right now, but I'll go ahead and explain why this is useful. I'm gonna clear this code. I'm gonna create a new variable here called with hello. And all it's gonna do is invoke greeter and pass in hello. Now if I console.log with hello, I should see a function in the terminal because greet, the greeter function here takes in the greeting and returns a function waiting to be invoked, which will then take in the name. Now this is useful because I can take with hello and I can invoke it with Brody and I can invoke it with Bob. I can invoke it with Jane and I can invoke it with YouTube. And if I open up my terminal here, they're all going to print out the names of the people that I passed in, but it's also going to reference this hello that I passed in earlier. The fact that we're able to invoke these, this function later in the code while have it still referencing this one variable right here is a concept called currying. And currying is a perfect example of what higher order functions actually are. Now, if the arrow functions are throwing you off and not making it obvious what this is actually doing, I'll go ahead and write it for people that are familiar with ES5, but you should definitely be familiar with ES6 by now. go back to my terminal and invoke this again it should work so I just wanted to rewrite that out just in case it was throwing someone off so let's make a few more changes to this greeter function so that I can show you how special and how important this type of functionality really is to functional programming now instead of console logging I'm going to instead return a string and get rid of some of this noise down here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an array of some names in it so I'm gonna just call this names and I'm gonna do Brody, I'll do YouTube, and I'll do Sally. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return a new array with the greetings inside of it. So I'm going to call this variable um, updated greetings. It's a horrible name, but whatever. And I'm going to do names.map, and I can just pass in this with hello. And if I log updated greetings, what we should see is hello Brody, hello YouTube, and hello Sally. So let's see if we get that. That's exactly what we get. Basically what's happening here is names is mapping over this array. And for every single item in this array, it's calling with hello. And with hello, if you go up here to the greeter function, is then going to invoke this return function, which is expecting a name. So it's going to map over this array right here. And for every item, it's gonna call with hello, but it's actually gonna be calling line four. And the name is gonna go in here and it's gonna return us a new string of that greeting that's held in memory, plus the name that's in that array at that time. And this concept here is called point-free syntax. And we're gonna have a video on this, probably two videos from now, after we discuss currying, but 
point-free syntax and invoking curried functions is one huge aspect to functional programming. So if you understand this, you're doing a great job. Now, I don't wanna to get too far into it, but point-free syntax is basically a way of writing your logic to where you don't describe the arguments that you're passing to functions and just basically let the names of the, the variables and the functions do the explanation of the logic for you. And that goes back to what really makes up declarative programming. I'm gonna cut the video here. If all of this stuff made perfect sense to you, then you're gonna breeze through the rest of the videos. If you have any questions, this is you know some more complicated stuff in JavaScript. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, leave a comment, tell me I suck. I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, but I appreciate you joining and stay tuned for the next videos on functional programming and JavaScript.